setting the premise. Before we talk about Bitcoin, just set the premise and that you have to, you have to disassociate yourself with your worldview because it's going to go away. One way or another, something you take for granted and probably almost everything you take for granted about the modern world is going to be completely gone in a hundred years. And maybe not even that long, you know, I mean, take, you know, take the 20th century, for example, the 20th century was much slower than we are today in terms of technological change. And that degree of change happened multiple times in the 20th century, you know, in, in um, what year was, it? I think it was 18, 1869, I believe was when we finished the transcontinental railroad in the U S and 1969 was when we landed on the moon. So it's like, okay, that's a hundred years. I mean, to go from the railroad the transcontinental were not being completed to landing on the moon in a hundred years. It's like, that's multiple iterations of complete societal change. Um, and in the, in the same regard, that's happening today and that's going to happen in the future. And it's only going to get faster. And I got a lot of, almost all the feedback I got my Twitter thread was positive, but a lot of people comment like, Oh, that's impossible. It's not going to happen. Blah, 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 blah. You're insane. And I understand that. But the reality is Joe, the way I put it to people is that if you don't think this is true, your base case is hoping for like complete apocalypse. You know, I mean, technology has only gotten faster and faster for thousands of years. And to assume that trend reverses or stops, it's like, okay, now your base case scenario is that something so dramatic has happened that all the momentum we gain has stopped. So it's like, okay, what, like nuclear war? Is that what, is that what you expect? You know, is, is mass starvation, you know, so, like some catastrophe. And perhaps that's possible. I, I put that in the thread too. Like what if something horrible happens and, you know, kills a lot of people, but you know, the reality is like our base case expectation, our optimistic expectation is that our entire worldview is almost dead. And people think that's a pessimistic worldview. And I think it's the only optimistic worldview that makes any sense is that we're in what tomorrow will consider the ancient world. And we're at the tail end of that. So that's how I start my thread talking about technology and how much we have in common with the past and how little we have in common with the future. Yeah, definitely. I think another like interesting point uh, kind of showing how fast the world has changed is similar to landing on the moon, but before that, just the Wright brothers going up into the air the first time. I think that was like 60 years, 70 years apart maybe, which is just even less than 100 years. So it's just kind of mind-blowing how fast things are changing. You had like three like kind of interesting examples like in, near the first part of your thread. Like they were talking about like life expectancy, education, and like energy of how you know, people and like society is, is different from like now and, and 2000 years ago, you know, can you like expand on some other examples that you may potentially have included in the thread? Yeah, sure. So some specific, specific examples, the one I care about the most, you know, people think, you know, Bitcoin is all about getting rich and sure that's a component of it, but really I care about Bitcoin. I talk about Bitcoin because I genuinely believe it's going to save millions of lives. And because it's, this is about helping those in the third world. And it, with the first, the first example, I gave in the thread, I think, was about poverty. You know, in ancient Rome, 95, 90% of the world population were in extreme poverty. And as recent as the 1920s, that number was still at 80%. Now it's more like 10%, thank God. And hopefully in the future, it's going to be even lower. But the point there being that we went from 90, 95% to 80% in 2000 years, and that we've gone all the way down to 10% in a century. Like, where are we going to be a century from now? Like, dramatically lower. And, you know, some other examples being that, you know, childbirth in both 1923 and the year 23, childbirth was incredibly deadly in both of these eras. Uh, you know, I have great grandparents and great great grandparents where that passed away because of childbirth. Uh, malaria uh, was a real threat. Um, you know, infant mortality is down dramatically and therefore life expectancy is up dramatically. And then as far as technology goes, you know, we have the Internet now, like I mentioned earlier, uh, we are in instant communication with each other. You know, I, I give probably a dozen examples in, in the thread of how life has changed more in the last hundred years than the previous uh, 1900 years. Um, another one I didn't include the thread, which I think is always worth mentioning, is that, you know, we didn't really know galaxies existed until 1923. And now we have evidence, it, it, not just evidence, but like actual documentation of gravitational waves and black holes. It's like. Okay. <laughs> so it's not just technology. It's not just life expectancy. It's in every facet of life. You know, we have, you know, on this computer here that, that we're both using, you know, we have access to literally every book that's ever been written by man. And a hundred years ago, probably we wouldn't be reading, or there's at least a high chance that we wouldn't uh, be reading or completely literate. So that, that, those are some of the examples I went through. And I gave uh, charts and examples um, of the kinds of things that have changed the last hundred years. Yeah, totally. I think that was well said. Um, 
You also made, before we, I brought up that question or that topic, you're talking about how, you know, there could be this scenario where a lot of things go wrong and like technology growth does yeah. actually like slows or like we regress like a total nuclear war. But also you got to remember the point that, I mean, the 20th century was the year of t total war. We had World War One and World War Two, and we still had tremendous technology growth. So even with things, many things potentially going wrong, you, you're, this is kind of the base case scenario. That, that's, that's exactly it, Joe. You know, we had World War One. you know, what was it, 18 million people died. I mean, the Spanish flu, another 20, 30 million, whatever it was, and then 80 million World War Two. I mean, it was, especially the first half and the Great Depression, oh, can't forget that, you know, I mean, there was a lot of war uh, last century, and it was awful. And thankfully, thankfully, you know, um, you know, the end of World War II and the bringing of the nuclear bomb and all that changed the incentive structure of war, so we haven't had a war since then. But, yeah, it's like you have to ask the question. We're already going faster in the 20th century. What if we don't have a major crisis like those? You know, what if instead of three or, or four, I guess if we include the Depression, we only have one? I mean, you know, bad things are going to happen, but I think – to be an optimist, you have to admit that the best case scenario is that our entire worldview is going to be technologically irrelevant in 30 years, and that worldview is going to be irrelevant 20 years after that, and then relevant again in 10 years, and then it's we're only getting faster. And I go into that um, in my Twitter thread. I, I chart out clearly global energy consumption and usage, and we're just entering a parabolic spike, and that parabolic spike has been continuing for thousands of years. We're just there's nothing new about the modern area. We're just continuing the trend. 